Hey guys, happy Sunday. It's such a beautiful Sunday, guys. Let's give God thanks and praise for this wonderful day for making us see the starting of yet another beautiful week, guys. We are so blessed. We are so blessed in Canada, guys. Thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. I hope you guys are having a good Sunday. You know, um, I actually miss going to church. You know, I need to find... I recently moved, you know, I moved... I was staying at home all the time, you know, with my parents and because of COVID, you know, I moved and I started renting and, you know, I haven't found a church yet around this area, but I need to find a church that's close enough so that I can go to every Sunday because I miss going to church, you know, you always feel so filled and so blessed after church and it's just such a perfect start to your week, so yeah, I do miss that. So yeah, I just um, did my hair. I did some cornrows at the front. I'm not very good at um, doing cornrows in my own hair. Like if I'm doing someone else's hair, it's not as bad. But when I'm doing my own hair, it's not very straight. And so yeah, I have some gray hair in the middle there. Yes, stress from work. <laughs> Let's blame work. Yeah, but yeah. So yeah, these are my cornrows. And I did some big, 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 big twists at the back. So yeah. Yeah, that's my hairstyle for the week. Yeah, guys. So. Yeah, today I um, decided that I would talk to you guys a little bit about my experience doing a medical internship at um, Grenada General Hospital. So yeah, because the last video I did, I stopped off um, at, up to when I finished my clinical rotations. So yes, yeah, so I finished my clinical rotations, I think it was in March of um, 2018. And then I graduated from medical school with my doctor of medicine degree on the 10th of June 2018, which was the happiest day of my life, guys. Right, so, um, so well, coming up to um, the time before I um, finished um, medical school, I did um, find out about, you know, what was available here in Grenada for people who, you know, just graduated from medical school. And I was informed by, you know, someone that um, recently finished school that there's an internship program at the general hospital. So I found out about it and I applied for the internship program. You know, and it, it's a simple application process. You know, the usual, you fill out your application form. You have to bring in your um, medical diploma. Um, you have to have two letters of recommendation and you have to send in a picture, I think, and your CV. You know, it's nothing, nothing too, too much, nothing too demanding. So I did that. You know, um, for anybody that wants to know, you can um, contact Miss Wilson. I think it's mwilson at su.edu. You know, you can contact Miss Wilson if you want to find out about the internship program or if you're interested in applying so that she can um, send that information to you. So she's at the um, clinical teaching unit at um, Grenada General Hospital. That's kind of upstairs, the casualty department. For those of you who are in Grenada and can actually visit there, you know. Um, but thinking about it, I haven't really seen her in a while, maybe because of the whole um, COVID thing. But that's usually um, where she is in the CTU, we call it, clinical teaching unit. Miss Wilson, she's in charge of... Um, you know um the application process for interns and so so yes i spoke to miss wilson and i applied for internship so by the time graduation rolled around you know i already got my email saying that you know i was accepted into the internship program and that i was starting the first day of july in 2018 so i was so excited guys because it was always my dream to work home to work in a hospital i used to watch the hospital and i used to be like this is where i want to work you know i want to serve my people i want to help my people i want to make a difference in my country from ever since i was in medical school everybody would be like why do you want to come home like you know like there's nothing much to offer at home like why don't you stay overseas or go overseas and and, and you know like make something better of yourself and i was like no like i really love my country and i really want to serve my country so i decided that you know this is my dream and i want to come home you know but if you if you are you know a graduate from sgu and you plan to apply for residency then by all means go ahead like you know it's always good to do your residency and you can always return home after your residency you know just if you're on a scholarship you know you just you know let them know that that, that is your plan that you plan to do residency and then that you'll come home after to serve out your bond you know 
but yeah so but i just i just really wanted to come home and also um the whole application process for residency you remember i told you guys that i did step one but your assembly actually has three steps so i did step one and step two you usually do it at the ending of like your third year going into fourth year kind of thing i think i can't fully remember right now but yeah um so that you can apply for residency you need to do step two so as when i did step one it was around age 100 us it's probably more expensive now step two um is two exams so it's a clinical skills exam where it's like a practical exam where you see standardized patients and you diagnose them and you know you write up your your soap notes they will call it and then um there's the clinical knowledge exam ck which is a multiple choice exam which is, which i've heard i i didn't do it but i've heard it's a very difficult um exam so you have to study hard for that exam and yes um so i did not do step two cs or ck because the exam like both of them combined it comes up to a thousand probably 800 us you know and i just did not have that type kind of money at that time you know it's a, it's a lot of money to spend and the next thing is you can spend all that money on the exam you can spend all the money on the application process for residency i think each application is around 30 us and then when you go for your interviews you know you have to pay for housing because the interview might be out of state so you might have to pay to stay in an apartment or a hotel or, or the mbmb for some days or something like that you know so it comes up to be a lot a lot of money at the end of applying for residency and i just did not have that type of money so yeah and in addition to that i just wanted to be home like i was in new york and like i told you i had a good experience in new york because i lived with my cousin and he was very nice to me you know and you know new york is not bad you know i had some amazing friends at the hospital i was at like we were just uh, we, we were such a wonderful team you know it was six of us all of us from hvu and we just bonded so well and we were so close and we used to always go out and they, they are so amazing you know so i had good friends i had my cousin so my overall new york experience it was good but i still missed home you know, I would still think about home and miss home and sometimes even cry because I miss home even though, you know, I didn't have so much of a bad experience. I did not have a bad experience at all in New York. You know, my experience in New York was good. You know, so yes. Um, yes, guys. So coming back to internship. Yes. So I just wanted to let you guys know why, you know, I chose to come back and to do my internship at the hospital. So yeah, I got a letter saying that I got accepted and I was so happy, guys. I was so happy. I was like, yes, my dreams are coming true. This is what I've always wanted, you know. And then um, we had the week before we started, we started the first day in July of 2018. The week before we started, we had orientation where um, they basically, um, we had some like lectures, you know, on high yield topics and on emergency topics. And so as a refresher, before we started seeing real patients, you know, and being responsible for real patients, you know, and you know, they also, you know, made us know like, you know, how to do our physician orders, how to write prescriptions, you know, other little things you will know to do our task on the ward, you know, they, um, they taught us that as well. And then, well, the internship program in Grenada, it's one year, right? You rotate through four specialties, right? So you do internal medicine, you do obstetrics and gynecology, you do pediatrics, right? And you do surgery and orthopedics combined, right? So each rotation is three months, right? So it comes up to one year. So I started off in obstetrics and gynecology, guys. And oh, that was a tough rotation for me, especially starting off in that rotation, guys. It was tough. You know, like my first week of being in obstetrics and gynecology, I had 20 patients. Like, you know, as a new doctor just coming into the hospital, I had 20 patients, guys. You know, and I was so overwhelmed. But the group of interns that I was working with, I was the only new, brand new intern on that rotation at the time so everyone else there was experienced and you know they they helped me out a lot you know they they taught me how you know everything worked and and you know they helped me they helped me out a lot and they were very supportive and you know i made it through my obstetrics and gynecology rotation even though it was a very difficult rotation for me because it was my first rotation you know obstetrics and gynecology you don't really learn 
much of it in basic sciences. You know, we did it in our clinical rotations, you know, but I mean, as a student, you, you don't really, you know, get the ex same experience you get as the actual doctor or as the intern, you know, you don't get the same experience. So it was the materials a bit new to me. So I did struggle a bit in obstetrics, you know, and gynecology, but all in all, you know, it was okay, I survived. And then I moved on to internal medicine, right? So I was so excited about internal medicine because I just always felt in my heart that, that I'm an internist, you know, like internal medicine is what I like, you know, I like um, treating diabetic patients and hypertensive patients and patients with strokes and patients with heart attacks and, and I just felt like that was my calling. So I was very excited for my internal medicine rotation. You know, but, um, you know, internal medicine rotation as well, it was good because um, what what we have, like each each rotation that you do, you have what we call um, consultant ward rounds, where you will see every patient with the consultant in the morning. So you, the consultants, they usually come in around 8, right, or 8.30. So you have to come to the hospital around probably 7 or even 6.30, you know, to have everything prepared, right? So you let them, you know exactly what everybody's vitals are, you know, what they, all their updated labs are, you know, their physical exam, you know, if they had any complaints, you know, if they have any issues overnight, because you need to let the consultant know all the details about all the patients when they come for consultant ward rounds. But medicine um, consultant ward rounds was a bit different in that they would teach you do, during consultant ward rounds. So, I mean, all departments, they, they, they do teach you on ward rounds, but medicine, they make it a, their duty basically to teach you on consultant um, ward rounds. So you would learn a lot um, during ward rounds on medicine. So that part of it was good. But again, the patient load in medicine was a lot, like a lot, a lot of patients and sometimes you will get very frustrated and sometimes you're trying to finish your work, you know, your simple tasks like progressing your patient. A progress notice is basically like a soap note that you do for your patient every day. So every day you have to progress all your patients, right? So you progress all your patients every day and then you also have to maybe take blood for your patients, follow up labs, try to get your patients to do x-rays. So in medicine, a lot of your patients will need EKGs, so you have to do EKGs for your patients. You know, some of your patients might need CT scans. You'll have to do the referral form and make all the arrangements for the patients to get the scans done because we don't have a CT scanner available in the hospital as yet. So, you know, anybody that has to get it done, they have to go to either Spicel or St. Augustine. So you have to make the arrangements for them to go. So, yeah, all of that had to be um, done, you know, during the day. And sometimes you're trying to, to get that done um, during the day. And then what will happen is that an admission will come in, right? And medicine is, is notorious for admissions, right? You have a lot, a lot, a lot of admissions in medicine during the day and in the night. So, you know, medicine could have been a, a bit overwhelming for that reason, right? And then also you have a lot of um, sick patients in medicine because you tend to get like the older patients with strokes and heart attacks and you know all these life threatening conditions so sometimes it could have been a bit depressing as well because you, you know you will be dealing with, with, with these patients who are very sick and sometimes you feel like they're not getting better and you know it might make you feel a bit you know, depressed and, and down so for that reason it was a bit frustrating but overall it was a good rotation we have excellent consultants there they are amazing you know we have very 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 good internists at our hospital so overall it was a, a good rotation then after I did medicine I did surgery so surgery actually <laughs> actually as a student I did not like surgery at all but as an intern, I actually enjoyed my surgery rotation very much. And I think it's because I um, already did two rotations. I already did obstetrics and gynecology and I already did medicine. So I, I had a better hang of, you know, how to get my work done on time. And, you know, I had a, a better understanding of, of how to actually be a doctor, you know. Because remember, I was doing that transition from medical student to being the, the doctor. So, you know, by that time, I got the hang of that. So, you know. I was much more confident during my surgery rotation than I was in, in my previous two rotations. So my surgery rotations was, was good, you know. I came in very early in the morning for my surgery rotation. I came in 6.30 every morning, right? And I would do all my progress notes before the consultant comes for one round so that, you know, everything is in place when the consultant came. And then, you know, we, 
and ward rounds. We present all the patients. Well, we have um, certain um, surgery consultants that, that like to teach as well. So, you know, we'll have our teaching and so And then after ward rounds, in surgery now, because I would have done all my progress notes before ward rounds, um, all I would have had to do is what we call the consultant ward rounds, where we would write in what the consultant said on ward rounds. And then in surgery, you have to do procedures, right? So in, in surgery, the intern is basically um, responsible for mostly doing um, debridements and so. So debridement is basically um, when you're removing all the dead tissue from an infected wound, you know? So, so yeah, we would have um, been doing those debridements. So mostly, I would finish early most days because I came in early and I did half of my work early. So then I was able now to, to just have, after ward rounds, I just had to do procedures and then I was done and I was able to go on and help, you know. My other teammates would have probably had more work to do than me. So my surgery rotation as an intern was very good, very, very good. I enjoyed my surgery rotation as an intern. And then after surgery, I did orthopedics. Well, surgery and orthopedics is combined. So you do six weeks of surgery and six to seven weeks of orthopedics. However, it goes to make it three months, right? So yeah, I did um, orthopedics. And orthopedics is a chill rotation. You have less patients, you know, you have less things to do because most of the patients, they come in, they already have on a back slab. You know, if they need a cast, most of the time they go up to theater to have the cast done. You know, there's not much you have to do. Basically, you just have to progress them and take blood and, you know, that's basically it. So orthopedics was a chill rotation. Sometimes, you know, you have very few patients. Sometimes you had even just two patients in, in orthopedics. So. Yeah, orthopedics, it was good. And then after I did orthopedics, I did pediatrics. So pediatrics also was a good rotation for me. I mean, pedi pediatrics is, it is nice. We have, again, we have very good consultants in, in pediatrics. They do a lot of teaching there. Um, the greatest struggle in pediatrics was taking blood from the babies and, you know, the children, because especially the younger children, like the five-year-old and the six-year-old, you know, they would fight a lot. So it would be hard to get their blood. And so that was like the greatest challenge in pediatrics and also pediatric calls can be very hectic because in pediatrics now you're responsible for all the newborn babies so any baby being born you know with any issues like meconium or any breathing problem or from a diabetic mother anything like that you know the pediatric team has to be there have to be present so we have to be there for the majority of deliveries you know to, to receive the baby and to resusc resuscitate the baby if necessary and also we have to be there for all the c-sections every single c-section the pediatric team has to be there you know to receive the baby and to resuscitate the baby if need be you know and then we had some additional um, tasks as well we had to do like the newborn record which is basically a physical exam for the babies we have to do that for all babies you know we have to follow up um, the cord bloods and so you know and then they added in recently um, doing the sickle screen so we had to, we were also responsible as the intern for doing the um, sickle screens you know so yeah sometimes the cause could be hectic because you might have admissions you might have to go for deliveries and you might also have to go for c-section so you'll be up the whole night and in addition to that you have to do the newborn record and do the sickle screens and then every morning you have to um, take bloods from all the babies um, that that had jaundice basically you had to do the bilirubin levels so every morning once you're on call you have to get up early in the morning like four o'clock to take all the billies for basically all the babies under the lights and sometimes you have to take some rebound billies as well so yeah pediatric calls could have been very hectic because sometimes you're going all night and maybe you just get done at four and then at four you have to go take your billies because you know, the billies have to be taken at a certain time, right? It's, it's something that is measured based on time. So you have to take it at a certain time. So, yeah, so pediatric, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's a nice rotation, but the cause can be hectic. So, yeah, overall, my um, experience as an intern, it was a good one. And I, I, I would say it was a good one because I, I really grew as, as a doctor. You know, I learned how to be responsible, I learned how to be accountable, you know, I gained a lot of skills, a lot of things that I did not know how to do as a medical student, you know, I learned it how to do as an, an intern, you know, so you gain a lot of, of skills, you know, as an as a intern, and so, so it, it was good in that sense, but the only thing that I can say that it, it was very challenging as well, you know, very, very, very challenging, because, um, the intern basically was responsible for a lot of things that probably interns in other countries might not be responsible for, 
for example, the intern was responsible for taking all the blood from all the patients. You know, where I did my clinical rotation, the nurses would take the blood. And sometimes in other countries, I think in Cuba, the phlebotomists would take the blood. But in Grenada, the interns take the blood for all the patients. And in addition to taking the blood for the patients, you also have to bring the blood up to the lab to be tested. You know, so sometimes you're very, very, very busy on the ward, but you know you need back this patient's blood results. So you need to take the time now to walk up to the lab, you know. And the walk up to the lab, you know, <laughs> it can take a good five minutes. So, you know, that, that takes out of your day as well. The interns are also responsible for doing, you know, all the PHEs. And in addition, you know, you have the workload. Like, so in other countries where, um, like in the States, for example, I think an intern cannot be responsible for more than 10 patients. Like, you know, they have a cap as to how much patients they are responsible for. In Grenada, you can, <laughs> any patient, that is your consultant's patient, you are responsible for that patient. So if your consultant has 20 patients, you have 20 patients. If your consultant has 30 patients, you have 30 patients. Unless, of course, there's two of you on that team with the consultant, then, you know, you will split it half and half. But, you know, I've had many occasions during internship where I had, you know, 20 patients, you know, and you have to do everything that needs to be done for all 20 patients, you know, because each life you know, it's valuable as a doctor. You have to be very accountable. You have to be responsible. You have to do what needs to be done, no matter if you're tired. You have to get it done. So, you know, that, that was a bit um, challenging as well. And also, you know, if certain things, you know, didn't get done, like, you know, certain x-rays or a certain lab tests, might, you might find yourself getting blamed for that, you know, and sometimes it, it's not your fault. Sometimes you did your part, you requested the x-ray, but maybe the people in the x-ray department didn't call the patient, or maybe they did call the patient, but the orderly on the ward was not there to bring up the patient, you know, so it's not really your fault, but you know, you will still get blamed for it, you know, so yes, yeah. so, so that could have been a challenge, but overall, it was a good experience. I think doing internship in Grenada, it definitely um, shapes you into being a good doctor, and I think once you do internship here, you can be a doctor anywhere in the world, because you face so many challenges here, you have so much obstacles in your way, you have limited resources, you know, and you have to push through it all and still do your very best for your patient. Right, so I think once you do internship here, you, you become a very competent doctor, you know. So overall, I would say it, it was a, a good experience. So yeah, guys, I, I hope that y'all had a, or having a good Sunday, you know, and I hope you guys have a very productive week, you know, and remember to always stay positive, you know, and even though, you know, things might happen that might stress you out, just try your best to take a step back, to relax and to just believe that everything will be okay. So yes guys, have a wonderful week. Bye.